uh, I would say that um, the elections went well. Those who came out uh, were happy to express their franchise. There were challenges, definitely. There were challenges that we, we got, uh, some infractions of, uh, of, of the rules. Some of them actually constituted electoral offenses. Uh, but, but on the whole, on the whole, I, I would score INEC as having uh, performed maybe about 70, 80% and, uh, uh, in, in the delivery of these elections, and that, that would be an A for, for... Welcome to my channel, where we discuss everything and all things politics, especially about the 2023 presidential election held in Nigeria on February 25, 2023, and the result controversially announced on March 1st, 2023, and the outcome of that election is being challenged in the court at the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal from where it will eventually get to the Supreme Court. And right now in Nigeria, all eyes are on the judiciary to find out who truly won the 2023 presidential election held in Nigeria this year. Now, now while we're on it, uh, the video you just watch is uh, the Nigerian Bar Association President, Yakubu Mekau. Mekau, in an interview he granted. This interview is to show that the MBA under his leadership had been very partisan and very biased. And uh, the implication of that is what we're going to look at in this video. Uh, the MBA president granted this interview shortly after the presidential election. Other a day or two, uh, I granted this interview to Channel's television to speak about the, his observations about the presidential national assembly election that were held on February 25, in which most reasonable Nigerians will agree that the opposition party is kicked against even the announcement of that result. If you are following the, if you follow the election, you see that the International Conference Center that day, where that was the collection center, National Collection Center, the opposition parties protested about the fact that results are being compiled without taking cognizance of the INEC, the result on the INEC IRA. The INEC chairman, uh, Mahmoud Yakubo, he, he promised that they would look into it. They didn't look into their complaint late early in the morning on march 1st he announced the results and uh, here we are today now that election that was held because of the way Anne conducted it it's it was a judge one of the worst elections ever held in nigeria in fact some people believe that it is the worst worse than 2007 election that brought Yaradua to power. Okay? Now, this is the election that the NBA president on national television was describing as fair enough to the level that he awarded the Independent National Electoral Commission an A. What else do you need to know that this body is not trusted to play the role that the NBA had played over the years in this country in terms of being the moral conscience of the nation? Okay? Of course, that was why the government itself this romance between the MBA and Aswadbola and Metinobu, that was why even when the European, when this administration was reminded by the European Union Observer Mission, 
that was accredited to monitor the election, that the process that brought them to power was flawed. They quickly resorted to citing the Nigerian Bar Association report, which of course favored it. And were claiming that Nigerian Bar Association had more people on ground than the European Union, that their verdict is far more interested and far more reliable than that of the European Union. But the European Union observers were not the only ones that observed that the election was anything but free and fair. Okay. So, uh, given the romance between the NBA leadership, especially Mekao, and uh, uh, the APC and Tinubu administration, it was therefore not a surprise to many who had known that this NBA is not neutral, that the body invited President Bola Tinubu, the man whose presidency whose presidency is still uh, is still being disputed to grace his his uh, annual conference. Knowing too fully well that the Independent National Electoral Commission that announced Tinubu as the winner did not follow its own guidelines and the Electoral Act in the conduct of the election, MBA still invited him. It was, an, it was obvious that the MBA has sold its soul to politicians especially to the ruling party at Nasuadibola and Tinubu. At the time that the NBA president granted that interview to China's television, the NBA was well aware that the election is going to be challenged in the courts and that the conduct of the election is going to be a major contentious issue, which demanded neutrality from a body uh, like the NBA, but, but to his current president, neutrality is not an option. It, ha it has to show that it has sided with the government of the day. It has to show that it has sided with INEC. That was why when the government of uh, Bola Tinubu was challenged, as I said earlier on, they were challenged because of the reports of the of the European Union which we didn't forward them. They, 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 they cited the NBA because the NBA couldn't, couldn't uh, hide its bias. And that has also been reflected in the recent uh, uh, Bar Association meeting, 2023 annual general meeting or conference. It was also noticed that it was not right to have invited Tinubu when his matter is still in court. And one of the people that noticed this and drew attention to it was the former national former chairman of the National Human Rights Commission, Professor Chide Odenkalo, who accused the president of the NBA, Yaku Mechao, of being partisan. Odenkalo stated this following the invitation of President Bola Tinubu to the NBA annual conference by Mechao at the MKO Abiola Stadium in Abuja. Now, to show you more proof that NBA under this leadership had been one of the most biased NBAs we have ever seen in the history of this country. Because with Hitato, the NBA used to be the moral voice of Nigeria. NBA used to be the body that speaks truth to power. 
We know the role MBA play in restoration of democracy in Nigeria. We know the role the MBA play in fighting against draconic decrees by the military. We know the role MBA had played right from our independence period. We know it. But what we are getting now is an unusual situation where the MBA is in romance with the government in power and has lost its voice to speak truth to power. And that is at the detriment of that body and at the detriment of Nigeria. Now, Mekao speaking on the team of the conference, getting it right, charting the course for Nigeria's nation building. Urge Aswadibola Mechidu, but as the president, to replicate what he did in Lagos at the federal level. Say that Tinubu should replicate what he did in Lagos at the federal to the federal uh, at the federal level. He was praising Tinubu that Tinubu was a success in Lagos, so he should replicate uh, what he did in Lagos. And you can see that is a clear demonstration of partisanship. That Tinubu was a like a, a success. That he should, what is it that Tinubu achieved in Lagos that should be replicated at the federal level? Is it the humongous pension he earned through the bill, executive bill he submitted to the assembly in Lagos that had given him humongous largesse for himself and subsequent governors of Lagos State? Is it in terms of the transparency in the running of Lagos State government account? Is it that the Nubu's name was not among those that the EFCC of that era accused of having misappropriated the funds of their states? On what ground? What is it that he did in Lagos? In any case, if he was a success in Lagos, why did the people of Lagos State reject him? The people of Lagos know him too well than any other, than any other part of Nigeria. Why did they reject him? the 2023 presidential election. They rejected him so overwhelmingly that it was even difficult for the APC to rig Lagos State. For whatever, because to the level that they couldn't manipulate Lagos election to deny him, uh, to give him a victory. Of course, there are those people like, uh, uh, people like, uh, the, the spokesperson of the Labour Party, uh, Delefa Rochini, who has said it, that if the true result of Lagos were to be what was announced by INEC, that he does not believe that Tinubu got, even got up to 25% of the vote cast in Lagos. Now, if somebody who had run Lagos and has Lagos under his grip for over 20 years could not be able to, to have the support of Lagosians. And they rejected him to the level that uh, Farah TV was talking about. Then what is it that he has in Lagos? What is it that he did in Lagos that need to be replicated in Nigeria? Already Nigerians are feeling the impact of what he did in Lagos because people are suffering more than ever before. The inflation has hit the roof. The Naira is getting to 1,000 Naira to the dollar. People are buying fuel at over 300% of what they were buying it under the Buhari administration. We never knew that there would be an administration that would, that Buhari administration would even be looked at as better than in terms of the what people are passing through right now in Nigeria. This is the person that Mikao was praising that he was a success in Lagos, that he should replicate his uh, uh, magic in Lagos in Nigeria. We not, not to forget about the, the humongous debt that Lagos is still living under as part of the legacies of his administration. As I talk to you now, Lagos book has remained opaque. Lagos State is the state that took federal government to court 
that the FOI bill, Freedom of Information Bill, cannot operate in Lagos. They took federal government. Why did they take federal government? Because it is part of the, uh, the process of Lagos government inherited from Tinubu that they don't want the books of Lagos to be saved. So if you are looking for the finances of Lagos today, you can't see it because Lagos they took federal government to court that FOI bill the law does not work in Lagos. The court have ruled against that, but how many people have been able to assess the books of Lagos State? That is the legacy of Aswadi Bola Meritinobu. Okay? So, so if, if Tinubu was that fantastic, why did Lagosians reject him overwhelmingly at the poll to the level that he was alleged by the Labour Party spokesperson and some other of, of, uh, spokesperson that's uh, uh, follower to Rotini? Among, uh, it's among those who have said that there is doubt if Tinubu even got up to 25% of the vote in Lagos. So if a man who did so fantastically well in Lagos could not get 25% in Lagos, as being alleged, then what is the magic that he performed in Lagos? And you know this Farah Rotimi uh, is an interesting person. He was one of those who said earlier on that if Tinubu becomes president of Nigeria, that he will leave the country. He will go and suffer exile. But he now said that he's not going anywhere because Tinubu did not win the election. Anek might have announced him as the winner, but he knows that Tinubu didn't win. So he cannot, he's not obliged to fulfill that vow he made that if he emerges president. And he's right to say that because the election is being disputed. It is now in the courts and nobody will know the actual winner of the election until the judiciary rule. Even if the judiciary rules, Nigerians will still scrutinize the final letters of the judgment to read it through to be sure that the judgment was fair in their verdict. Not like what we have seen where Ahmed Lawa, who contested for, senate, for presidential ticket of APC, emerged as a senator. Where uh, Doswil Akpabio contested for the presidency of the ticket for presidential ticket of APC and ended up and, uh, a senator and now senate president of the country. Okay, if they deliver that, that kind of judgment, nobody will, uh, will be obliged to, to regard it as anything but as a political uh, judgment that was uh, meant to satisfy a few uh, interests. But if they deliver the right judgment, I can tell you that, and they were able to prove that uh, Bola Metinubu won. Uh, I think Dele uh, uh, me being a gentleman, he will honor his vow, but uh, until the door, until it is proven that he won the election and won it fair and square, I think Dele me has a right to remain in this country and continue to work for the betterment of this nation. Now, one of the Now, reacting to the outcome of the annual general meeting on his uh, uh, ex handle, that was formerly Twitter, Odin Kalo said that Mekao has mortgaged the MBA with his, uh, uh, with his conduct at the annual general meeting. That is by inviting Aswad Bola Metinubu to the program. Kano, Kano, Kano stated that uh, it was all an unashamedly party political. And the MBA president, he was now suggesting that MBA president could have invited or asked the Attorney General of the Federation to represent the government while the case challenging Tinubu as elected president is in court. Uh, Odin Kano described Mekao's uh, action as irredeemably partisan describe him as irredeemably partisan. Of course, Mekao himself was not happy with Odenkala and others that had uh, pointed to his partisanship. He was not happy about it. So he now accused them of claiming that Tinubu uh, is illegitimate president. 
He said that it was wrong to refer President Bola Tinubu as an illegal president since no court has set aside his, set aside his declaration by the Independent National Electoral Commission. He, he submitted that as of today, there is only one president and commander-in-chief of the armed forces in the person of President Bola Tinubu. The NBA president, uh, he made this assertion at a public presentation of the coming issue at the end of the annual uh, general conference of the association. Uh, he had dismissed the insinuation uh, by some lawyers that Tinubu remains an illegality by virtue of the, ele uh, of the election petitions challenging his le legitimacy. However, what should be noted is that in the case of Chido or the Kanovar never called that Tinubu is illegitimate, but what he was saying that they should allow the due process to pass through before they start inviting him until let it be confirmed that he was the winner of the election. His election is being challenged. Why invite him? And the, also, you notice that in his presentation or his uh, position in his ex handle, he was saying that the attorney general could have been invited to honor the to, to, at the general meeting, okay, instead of Tinubu. So it, it therefore means that Odom can also recognize that as of now. The president is Tinubu because it was Tinubu that appointed the attorney general he was talking about that should have been invited. So it is uh, the guy will be clever by half by saying that people say that uh, Tinubu was illegitimate. It's not. It's not true. It's not true. Of course, it was an interaction with the media. Maybe they presented that into him that some people are saying that uh, uh, his government is illegitimate. Of course, the government is being challenged. That is why Atiku Abakar of the PDP and uh, Peter Obi of the Labour Party, they are in court to prove that uh, the election was flawed and that this election should be annulled. Uh, now also notice another typical example to show you that the NBA had become so partisan that he does not pay attention to the matters that concern lawyers that should be his top priority. Remember that back in July, the Department of State Services described lawyers who filed contempt charges against uh, DSS DG, Mr. Bichi, over the continued detention of uh, former governor of Central Bank of Nigeria, MFLA, as charge and bail lawyers. The service in a series of tweets posted via his official handle noted that the lawyers were headed by an overzealous and uninformed IPOP ECN lawyer. The service say charge and bail over, over zealous, uninformed, IPOP ECN lawyer, Maxwell Okpara, mobilizes other like minded lawyers against DG SS. Futile efforts. Well, Nigerians beware. This is in bad faith. Transferred aggression. A Biafran Republic agitator and an outlawed IPOP counsel defending. The suspended CBN governor is IPOP defending one of the ass. You can see a lawyer is now being referred to as being part a member of IPOP because he, he is a lawyer for IPOP. But in this case, he was a lawyer pushing for the right of a MFLA. Now you can what they say is IPOP defending one of the others. Is a MFLA part of IPOP? The, now the, the tweet continues to say, what a contradictory, what a contradiction, what is the connection? Is someone telling us something? May Maxwell be properly educated on points of law, please. Now, that is a very dangerous precedent that MBA should have risen to the occasion and asked for an apology. For the law body because lawyers are free to defend anybody even if hitler was alive today and he's taken to court lawyers have a right to defend him because they defend hitler doesn't mean that they support what he does or that they're a member of the of the czar or the, of, of, the, of the of the of the of the regime that he represented 
It doesn't mean that when somebody defended a Boko Haram, that person is also a Boko Haram. Or if somebody defended a bandit, that person is a bandit. A lawyer has a right to defend anybody who needed their services. Because as far as our laws are concerned, in Nigeria, the accused is innocent until proven guilty. That is our law. But when these things happen, did you see Nigerian Bar Association speak out against the tagging of their members as IPOP, ECN? Did you see it? You didn't see it because the MBA has lost its voice, has lost its relevance. As far as under this present leadership that we are watching, we all are seeing, it's concerned. They have lost their voice. And uh, they re now re the MBA now represents all that is wrong with the Nigerian state. That is why, as I speak with you, the hashtag, all eyes on the judiciary continues. It is because of this type of conducts, this kind of partisanship, being openly displayed by a major body in the judiciary like the MBA. That is why Nigerians are always trending with the hashtag, all eyes on the judiciary. Thank you for watching this video. And uh, if you are new to my channel and you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel. Hit the subscription button, hit the notification bell. When you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell, Anytime I have a new video, you'll be among the first to know. God bless you.